Hello, this is Bren Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to do a database tour for the Opposing Viewpoints database. In order to get to the library homepage from the school homepage, mouse over Student Support and click on Library, or click on Student Support, scroll down to Academics, and find us here alphabetically. From there, in order to get to the databases, you would click here. Before we go there, I want to show you quickly that if you ever have any questions, you can ask a librarian about research 24-7. If the SMC library is open, then you will talk to an SMC librarian. If we are not open, say it's a holiday or a Sunday or late in the evening, then you will talk to a college or university librarian from the consortium to which we belong. But when you use Ask a Librarian, you will always be talking to a college librarian. So in order to get to the databases, you click on the Databases button, and from there you'll open up a Live Guide that shows you a listing of all of our databases alphabetically by title with a short description of what each is about. Within this page, you can search a number of different ways. You can search by subject, you can search by database type, so for example, if your instructor has says you must use books, you can look just for ebooks. If you must use newspapers, you can lose just, look just for those. Most databases are a variety of different types of information, so this may or may not be that useful for you. If you know the name of the database, you can search by name. Okay. Our most popular databases are our general database, Academic Search Complete. You will find a little bit of everything in there. Journals, magazines, newspapers, trades, books, blogs, etc. U.S. News Stream is all newspaper articles, local, regional, and national, including all of the major U.S. national newspapers from about 25 years ago to today's newspaper. And then we always have new databases that we are checking out to see if students are interested in using them, and these are our trials. And when they disappear from here, if people like to them, they will show up over here. So today we know we're going to be using the Opposing Viewpoints database. So I click on O for Opposing Viewpoints, and it will tell me a little bit about the database. This is a really good place if you're just starting your research and you need to explore your topic, or if you don't have a topic and you're not really sure what you want to write about. When you go into Opposing Viewpoints, the first thing that it does is it highlights various topics that are currently of interest or areas of interest that include multiple topics. Then down here, we have issues that are grouped by topic. So we have 115 in science, technology, and ethics. We have 350 in society and culture. We have 141 in business and economics. So if something has been currently updated, it will have an updated link next to it. So if you want to look at a specific topic, artificial intelligence, for example, you can go directly to it. Or if you're interested in an area and you're not sure which topic you want to explore on that in that area, you can go to that topic area and it will list all of the issues that we have within it. So if I can go through here, I can find all sorts of things having to do with science and technology. And maybe what I'm really interested in is artificial intelligence. I can look at that. Or maybe I see something interesting that I didn't expect to see, like what is the overlap between technology and society, which has been recently updated. So I pick one. The first thing that it does is it gives me an overview of the topic, where I can read more about it. It tells me a little bit about this overview. It gives me the overview first with the main ideas within it, and then exploring those main ideas gives me some questions to think about. This is really nice if you're first exploring a topic and you're not sure exactly how you want to approach it when you write about it. Then it helps you with your citation. Over here on the top, it gives you other articles that are related to it and links to specific parts of this overview. So that's the overview. 
Now say, yeah, okay, this looks kind of interesting. I want to take a look at this. You can go one link up to Technology and Society, and beneath the overview, it gives you a variety of resources that you can link to through this page. Viewpoints are pro-con arguments. So if you need to look at both sides of an argument, this is the database for you. It also gives you academic, peer-reviewed scholarly journals, some infographics, some news, a whole lot of news, more pro-con arguments, some images in case you want to prep um, your essay or your presentation and make it pop, some magazines which are popular and intended toward general readers and not scholarly articles, some primary sources, things like letters or speeches, some videos, some statistics, this comes in handy, reference definitional material, for example, some audios and even some websites. So if your instructor has said you must use academic journals, you can go directly to that. If your instructor has said you must give me some pro-con arguments about this, you can go to that. And it will feature what it considers to be the most relevant pro-con arguments and journals, primary sources, further pro-con arguments, and all of those other format options that it mentioned up top. Okay, so I'm going to pick a couple of different viewpoints to show you how they work. And right off the, bat, off the bat, the first two are con and pro for the overlap between technology and society. So I can take a look at that. I can read through it. It prompts you before you read through it of things to think about as you're reading it. And this is really important because this is an opinion piece. This is not a journal article. So you are being presented with essentially a person, an author, who is presenting their side of the argument. It is not the entire thing. So if I decided that I wanted to use this, again, it helps me with my citation, I would take a look at all of the related articles. And I can also save it to Google Drive, save it to my OneDrive, mail it to myself, download it, or print it. I can have it read it to me, I can listen to it, and then I would go back to my results and I would take a look at the opposing viewpoint. That's where the name of this database comes from. And once again, some things to think about even as we're reading it. And this also helps to inform your understanding of the topic so that your writing on your paper will be richer and deeper and honestly easier. So if I like this one, I have my citation. I can fix it when I stick it in my paper because sometimes, well, the computer can make mistakes. So use the format that your instructor gives you for your citation, whether you use MLA or APA or whatever you happen to use. Make sure that you fix it when you put it in your paper. You don't want to lose points because the robot screwed up your citation. And then once there again, you can save it to the cloud, email, download, or print it. And you can listen to it. You can even change the display so that it's easier to read or in an alternate language. So that is a quick introduction to opposing viewpoints. It's a wonderful place to start if you are exploring topics, but it is not a one-stop shop. So I highly recommend when you use this database that you use this in context with other databases. Academic search, perhaps. Science full text, perhaps. Science Gale in context. Perhaps a philosophy database, depending on where your topic takes you. I hope you find this useful. And again, if you need help 24-7, you can ask a librarian. Good luck with your research.